Good evening, everyone. Time for another member update. Once again, sorry about the freight train airplane flying in the background. I haven't got the uh, PC problem solved yet. Hopefully, I will by next time. So, this is the longest long term chart of silver here. This is the monthly chart. And you can see the main thing I wanted to point out by bringing up this chart is that we are approaching the crossover of the MACD zero line on the monthly MACD. Now, this could be a significant event. The main reason I say that is because it hasn't happened, uh, excluding this event here. You can see that it wasn't really below the line it's hard to uh, imagine that the with the financial crisis that we had in 2008 and with silver going from a price of $21 all the way down to 850 that the blue line of the MACD did not cross into negative territory but it actually didn't you can see that it stayed above the line so in one sense one could say that the bull market didn't break actually until um, over in here somewhere when it when it actually crossed actually that would be over in here when it, the blue line actually did cross uh, one could also argue that the bull market is still intact and draw a trend line like this and that would be a valid argument uh, it, it could be considered a, a bull market that had a blow off on the way up but the main thing I wanted to point out here on this chart is what is the precedent for this sort of thing? Well, we actually do have a precedent for the MACD crossing over on the monthly, but we have to go all the way back in here. If you look here, if we go back to 2003, you can see that the MACD spent significant period of time here. You can see it's actually years from about 2000 or so all the way through uh, May, uh, June of 2003. So that's three plus years that we were under that line. You can see that here we've done um, 2013, say July of 2013. Uh, and we're just, so it's almost the same time frame even, but then you can see what happened when we did cross the zero line on the monthly and that's when we got a quick doubling you can see we went right from five dollar silver price uh this i thought that was 10 but uh it looks like it went to about nine so not quite a doubling but also with that you can see that that was kind of the beginning of a long bull run the next phase up that took about two more years brought us that 15 dollar price so that was a tripling and then uh, we had a few more years and then we got that run up all the way up to 50 bucks. So it went twofold, threefold, uh, basically fourfold here in, in 2008, and then it went tenfold. What would that give us if we had this sort of repeat performance? Well, we're gonna say our base is 20. Uh, I can't really say what the base is. It's not a long sort of base, but we'll just pick 20 as the number. A doubling gives us 40, a tripling gives us 60, uh, 80 bucks on the four bagger, and uh, a tenfold move gives us $200 silver. And we have to remember that the powers that be brought everything they had together to stop this. Will they be able to stop it the next time? Maybe not. So let's look at the story of the night here. This is about the Dallas police pension problem, and I mentioned this before. Now, it's being couched in terms of a poor real estate investment, but as I, I'm going to point out as we're reading this story, that it's one of those things that something is going to prick the bubble. Something is going to cause it to pop, and it, it, doesn't, it doesn't necessarily mean uh, that this one particular thing has any significance because the reason why a gigantic bubble pops is because it's a gigantic bubble, not because a pin came along. So it, it's not the, the, the thing that causes it to pop, but it's actually the bubble itself. And this is endemic in our society. And we're gonna see here, and some of the alternatives that they come up, come up with for this, they're gonna go into another bubble as well. So let's, let's read this. Dallas police pension on the verge of collapse as record number of cops seek full 
withdrawals. Now that would make you wonder right there, how can you seek full withdrawals? Aren't they locked into this one? We'll see they're going to retire. They, they, they realize that the writing is on the wall. Just over a month ago, we wrote that the Dallas Police and Fire Pension Fund was on the verge of collapse after a series of shady real estate investments resulted in massive markdowns of pension assets. The ouster of the fund's CIO and an FBI raid of the fund's largest real estate investment manager, see Dallas Cops Pension Fund near insolvency, we summed up the fund's dilemma as follows. The Dallas Police and Fire Pension, which covers nearly 10,000 police and firefighters, is on the verge of collapse as its board and the city of Dallas struggle to pitch benefit cuts to save the plan from complete failure, according to the National Real Estate Investor. DPFP was once applauded for its diverse investment portfolio, but turns out it may have all been a fraud as the pension's former real estate investment manager, CDK Real, Real I think that's Realty Advisors, was raided by the FBI in April 2016, and the fund was subsequently forced to mark down their entire real estate book by 32% guess it's pretty easy to generate good returns if you manage a book of illiquid assets that can be marked to your own discretion. Now, what is that a description of? Well, that's a description of our entire system. That's a description of the Federal Reserve's balance sheet. We're talking about illiquid assets that are marked at their discretion. They're not marked to market. There is no market for them. Uh, what else? 401ks, the stock market, the bond market, all these markets are at their discretion. The government's propping them up. And this just shows you it just takes that one pinprick and all of a sudden the bubble is popping, the snowball is rolling downhill very fast, and it all spins out of control very rapidly. This can happen very rapidly. The rampant fraud at the DPFP left the fund over $3 billion underfunded and its board of directors with no other option but to seek a $600 million infusion from taxpayers to keep the fund afloat. Even worse, a review of the pension's financials revealed $2.11 of annual benefit payments to members for every $1 contributed to the plan by members and taxpayers. The typical pension Ponzi, whereby plan administrators borrow from assets reserved to cover future liabilities, which are likely impaired to cover current claims in full. Well, it seems as though Dallas police officers are catching on to the Ponzi and rushing to withdraw retirement funds as quickly as possible before the whole system goes bust. As reported by local ABC affiliate, Dallas police officers are retiring at a record rate and opting for full cash withdrawals of their pension benefits. They're taking the lump sum as opposed to equal monthly distributions for life. Apparently, they don't think the fund will be around long enough to pay them for very long. But the pension fund is in trouble and in danger of going bankrupt. That's causing some officers and retirees to begin withdrawing their retirement funds and rolling them into 401ks. Now, 401k is the exact same situation. Now, they're um, supposedly all independent. I have my doubts about that. But if you don't think that there can't be some surprises from Fidelity or Vanguard or the rest of these gigantic companies that run these 401ks, uh, I've got news for you. There are going to be revelations coming out when, when everything hits the fan. News 8 has learned that one assistant chief recently withdrew more than $1 million, and sources say nearly $300 million has been withdrawn throughout the department. We're in a serious situation. I think everyone needs to be concerned right now about where we are and where we need to go to get out of this. DPFP board chairman Sam Fryer was apparently worried enough about the run on the bank exposing the pension for the Ponzi scheme that it is that he decided to send a letter to members urging them not to not act rashly and without full information. Now that's the kind of thing that you see whenever, you know when you see bank runs, remember Cyprus or uh, there are any number of events in history, they are always telling you don't panic, be calm, but we know what happens, the people who get their money out first are often the only ones who get their money out and the rest are left with nothing. 
The pension board also voted to stop allowing current police officers to withdraw the cash value of their pensions and are considering further measures that would restrict withdrawals by retirees. There you go. There's the door is closing already. The panic that has set in forced the chairman of the pension fund pension board, Sam Fryer, to issue a letter to members, quote, I would strongly urge all members to not act rashly and without full information, he wrote, you may make decisions that after all the changes are made are not in your best interest. Uh, no, Sam, I will take my money and we'll decide what I'm going to do with it later. I'm not going to wait. And I'm sure that's what they're all thinking. The board was so concerned that it voted to stop current officers from withdrawing any money from their pensions and sources say the board will soon vote to no longer allow retirees to take their money out. Quote, this may be the only way the pension can limit the cash outflow because we're in a bad situation that right now the existence of the system is at stake. Alas, the threats to restrict withdrawals of retirees probably didn't work out the way Fryer expected as it has set off a wave of early retirements. According to NBC, for the first two weeks of September, 24, September 21 Dallas police officers retired when only 14 retirements were expected for all of August and September. Through the first two weeks of September, there have been 21 Dallas police officers who retired. Multiple sources told NBC5 that commanders are bracing for many more retirements over the next two weeks as well. The Dallas Police Department did not foresee the volume of retirements this month. In early August, deputy chiefs told the city council members in a presentation that they projected 14 retirements between August 9th and October 1st. Alas, while Dallas police and firefighters may endure some short-term pain as their pension Ponzi is revealed for all to see, we suspect that the real losers, as per the usual, will be the taxpayers, who will ultimately be forced to pony up whatever amount of money is required to keep the whole farce going just a little longer. And that's the story. Now, we know that the taxpayers don't have the money to keep this Ponzi going. That's why we have the Federal Reserve buying assets. That's why we have the... Uh, the Bank of Japan buying half of the stocks in the stock market. There isn't enough money out there to keep this Ponzi scheme going and the Federal Reserve is going to have to come to the rescue. What it's going to be, it's going to be insane. Just think about, this is only the pension of 10,000 police and firefighters. And we're talking about numbers of them, uh, 21 and they're talking about the insolvency of this thing with 21 people retiring that they didn't expect to retire. This is how shaky these things are. This is how fragile the system is. This is how big the bubble has been blown up. And when it goes, everything's going to go. Uh, 401ks, stocks, bonds, government uh, tax revenue, Everybody's retirement, the insurance companies, annuities, everything that everyone thought was safe is going to go up in smoke when it finally happens. So that's a more than enough reason to be urgently stacking. Uh, I think that this move, I don't think it's going to take the amount of time that the last one took. Uh, where we're talking about two years to get a double. Uh, maybe four years to get a triple, and then it was a run of a couple years to get a tenfold move uh, from the eight to 50, roughly a sixfold move. Um, I think it's going to happen faster than that. I think it's going to happen this time when the whole system goes and we're starting to see things around the edges beginning to get very, very shaky. And we'll talk to you next time.